Hey everyone, I'm Joel with Dissecting DIY. And as you can see, we have completed our wall dust build that I've been talking about and pu putting on my Instagram and Facebook for the longest time. Now, my wife got this idea for this type of desk from Party Barn. Um, the desk was going for about $5,500. Of course, there was that was just way outside of our price range, especially for a desk that wasn't really gonna fit the space and needed to be adapted. So I figured I'd just build this the way I wanted to. Um, we used about uh, nine sheets of finished poplar plywood. That's three quarter inch and then three sheets of half inch. Sanded plywood. I used maple on the shaker style doors and an MDF. You're probably wondering why I went with such an expensive wood for something I was just gonna paint. And unfortunately that had to do with the supplies being limited and this is being the only thing that was left. Also any existing poplar, pine or any other red oak supplies um, tended to be warped and I just couldn't get the right type of lumber that I needed. So there was a lot of piecing together, uh, unfortunately due to COVID. The cabinet sizes that you're seeing, the actual opening is 35 inches on this, this side here. And that, uh, the, the total width is about 36 and a half. Filing drawers, 14 and an eighth, 14 inches and an eighth opening, about 15 and five eighths for total width. I do all my face frames with pine. I would have done, should have gone with a double here, but what I wanted to do is, I was trying to figure out, you can see that line there, but I was figuring out how to continue that shaker style or that square look everywhere. And I was able to do that all right. On the face frames, I probably would have had that line towards the back. Hardware, we went with Wayfair. They had just what we needed. And then of course, for the top, I do a three coats of poly shades along with two coats of a gloss polyurethane. I like oil base for desktops um, just because it's a, it's typically thicker. And then as it dries, polymer set up over 30 days, uh, you know, you get that just a really nice finish as opposed to water base, in my opinion. The holes were made with uh, the Craig Jig tool. And most of the stuff that I did, I did the inset European style hinges. I had to modify them a bit because I did a flush face frame, which typically no one could get me the type of hinge that I needed. And so I had to, I had to go with a different type of hinge. So I had to modify that a bit. I do plan on changing that out if I can find the correct hinge down the road. Moving on, you can see that I, I go with a red and black gaming setup. Um, just, you know, I know that a lot of people do that. I like it. Um, Cyber Power PC, that's what I game on. Uh, this is a Ryzen uh, 12 core processor, the uh, 5700 XT uh, for the video card, 32 gigs of HyperX RGB memory, and then of course the HyperX gaming one touchpoint hard drive. I currently play on Xbox and I have my HyperX uh, gaming headset there. I have a HyperX quadcast um, for my microphone, really like it. I really like that light, uh, even though the uh, sound quality, because this can be like a tin, it just kind of picks up and gives you a more high pitched sound for your voice. Um, you know, and if you're a sound guy, you probably notice some of the, the flaws with these mics. I did a custom mount that's attached to the stud. You can see my uh, X52 Pros for my Elite Dangerous gaming. And then of course, my printer and controls are, are here. And then of course, I, uh, you know, my sci-fi stuff. Love the games Halo, I like Terminator. Um, you know, you can see a couple Star Trek busts there. And um, also the uh, Back to the Future. So big sci-fi person, as you can probably tell. Guys, this desk was uh, something that I, I initially did for my wife, even though I was gonna put a desk here. Um, she needed a, a space to kind of work on. So she does, you know, she writes everything down and uses these monitors and um, you know, with all the working from home, it's just something she needed. So I figured I'd, I'd build it and get it out of the way. Uh, still quite a, an expense, but not $5,500. Anyways, guys, let's get into this build. I'm going to show you how to, how I made this. I try to differentiate from other uh, channels to kind of show you how I would do it. And then of course, um, limited tools. Unfortunately, you know, you're going to need certain tools for certain things. I know a lot of people say, oh, limited tools and people complain. Guys, that's just the name of the game. You got to invest in some tools. And I try to go with um, the level and clamp method. It didn't really work out. Uh, you know, I'll give you more advice in that in the video. Tried to limit the amount of tools I was going to use. I tried a different method. It made making this a little bit longer than I would have liked. But uh, again, I'm trying to show you guys something different. Also camera equipment that I recently invested in. 
were um, ripoffs, real cheap ripoffs, and they didn't even have autofocus. And you're gonna notice that in some of the shots, unfortunately. So let's get into this build. I'm Joel with Dissecting DIY. This is the wall desk. Now let's do some calculations. All right, everyone. Um, I just got done, just, just got done with the cut list. So this here is the side panels. Uh, you're gonna need eight of these. The gray or the blue are, are just gonna be uh, waist pieces and I'll let you know. You got the measurements here, 24 inches by 29.5 inches. That's gonna give you the height. And um, we'll head over to the next list here. This is gonna be cut list sheet two. So cut list sheet two. Again, those are the last of those side panels. And now we're gonna do the tops and the bottoms of the filing cabinet is gonna be 14 and 5 eighths. The opening is gonna be 14 and an eighth with the dado cuts. If you're not doing dado cuts, you have to reduce that to 14th and an eighth. These bottom pieces are gonna be for <clears throat> underneath the, um, the, the, the bottom of the cabinet. So that's just gonna be the face plate there or the front face plate. You will put another face plate over it to hide um, that one, but that's gonna be that, that's going to be with a different piece of wood, probably a pine face piece, uh, three quarter inch. So here we get into the tops and the bottom of the main cabinet. That's the one that's um, 36 and a half inches wide. Um, I don't know why I did 35.5. That should be, if that's 36 and a half inches wide, you're going to reduce a quarter inch on each side. So that actually should be 36 inches. So that's my mistake. This one right here, um, I did try doing some with decimal points, some with uh, fractions, but this is going to be the first of the upper cabinet or the upper file, um, uh, file cabinet. Uh, so 17 inches wide. That's actually, there's a bulkhead here that I had to adjust for or had to account for, which is why that's so deep. Maybe some of you would do uh, 12 inches, um, maybe 14, 15 inches, but uh, we went with 17 for our setup. Uh, the maximum height was also based on the height of the bulkhead. So there's about uh, an eighth of an inch gap between that and the bulkhead. And then of course it kind of does this with the house. So we had to adjust for that. Um, so everything is the same on your cuts it's just when you put that face piece on to this kind of that trickery of the eye that you uh, kind of play around with with something like that and making sure that you can secure it so that's this cut list that's cut list sheet three this is all with three quarter inch plywood so then of course we get the um, remainder of those cuts and then the two top pieces that you'll need so this should have um, the correct oh uh, so because this was 36 and a half and then there was like spacing by the wall. So I didn't take the baseboards out so that I think the baseboards are like 11 30 seconds or I, I forget what the, um, the actual measurement is, but they come out pretty, pretty good. They're really thick baseboards. So I had to account for that. And then, so you can add that. So I added that to this measurement, but you know, if you're not taking your baseboards out, you're not going flush up against the wall. Uh, that's something you're going to have to account for. And that's what I did with, with this. And you'll see that in the build that while I'm attaching those pieces, I actually cut out around the baseboard. Um, so that's cutlass sheet four. Cutlass sheet five is just the, uh, the these are the actual shelves. So uh, that, uh, you know, based on my measurements here, again, you're gonna have to adjust for everything that you're doing. But that was, you know, 17 inches um, for depth. I do wide, but, um, and then 36 and eighths, you can see that I, I switched from decimal to fractions here because I, I just think it's easier to read, but I wanted to show you both. Um, and then there's calculators online that you can use. You just Google like 36 and eighth minus an eighth and it'll come up with calculators or just, it'll just do the equation for you. Uh, so then on the next cut list, I actually account for those shelves. So if you see in my setup, so, these here are actually those shelves that were in the last one, okay? Uh, that's if you want four, you're gonna have to add an extra sheet of plywood. So 
this is if you want my three setup you can use so this will be birch so remember i recommended that uh so i use three quarter inch poplar but with um so these pieces here this is the 30 uh 37 inch um tabletop that's on either side underneath each of the um bookshelves so underneath each of the bookshelves you're going to have to account for um uh, for, for that but the so this is if you just want the three shelves if you're going to have a computer that you're going to have elevated um this is this is the um setup sheet or this is the sheet that you would use but this is going to be cutlass sheet six and then of course you can subtract that if you're if you don't want the four shelves and then if you do not if you do want four shelves and you do have the extra piece all this is going to be burned basically it's all waste and that's a bummer but um Unfortunately, this is 25.5 inches, so I couldn't cut it down the middle and then use the remainder piece. And that's why I did that as well. So if you don't mind the wood being a little bit different, if you're going to stain, this is going to be a big deal. But if you're going to paint, it's not. Um, so just something to keep in mind uh, to the types of wood that you're using. And then this here is that final, This again, this would be birch. That final tabletop piece, based on the, my measurements, it's 73 inches and then 25 and a half. And then, of course, you're going to make these minor cuts to match the wall because your wall is going to do this. You're not going to notice it, but you're going to basically push this up against the wall and draw a pencil line on it. And then you're just going to cut those pencil lines out. And then that way, when you slide it in place, you should have a perfect fit. So cut sheet eight is, this is where we get into the half inch stuff. So this is for the backer boards. Um, so this is the backer board for the main filing cabinet. Uh, I'm sorry, for the large cabinets on either end. And then the filing cabinet backer board, half inch. Uh, these are the measurements for that. And this, you're getting into the, the file cabinet boxes. So these are eight and three quarters by 12 and 16 eight and three quarters by 12 and 16 And then the rest, of course, is gonna be waste. Let's get into cut sheet nine. So cut sheet nine. Um, this is for the filing cabinets up top. Um, not the filing cabinets, the bookshelves up top. So those are those two backer boards at half inch. And then these are the remainder. Uh, so this is the bottom plate for your file drawers. These are the side plates for your file drawers. And then of course, the last piece that you're gonna need, let me make sure that I got my numbers right here. Yep, I did it right. So the last piece you're going to need is actually going to be a four by four. Um, if you can get them at Home Depot, you can, you know, possibly purchase them. You can even get the um, two feet by four feet. It's just that they tend to cost more. And it's kind of ridiculous that they there's such a huge upcharge. It's like a huge upcharge. So if I bought four of those, it would cost me almost double what it would cost to just buy a whole sheet and just do the cuts myself or to have Home Depot cut it. Uh, you know but it is what it is that's 10 sheets total if you account for that um, file cabinet like so if you're going to do it this way you'll only have nine sheets total so it's going to be let me see when do i get into so that's cut sheet eight so it'll be about um five sheets of the poplar, two sheets of the birch, finished birch, and then three sheets of half inch. So <clears throat> that's what you're gonna need for the project. That's what you're gonna see me doing all the cuts for. So remember my camera's quit and I did buy a new camera and I had to get rid of it in the middle of it because I was filming and I noticed as I started uploading everything and doing the editing in the middle of all this that the, I couldn't get this to focus at all. So I had to send that camera back and then rely on my old GoPro knockoffs, which have served me well, but man, I'd like, <laughs> I need to get better camera equipment. But yeah, that's that's what I was running into. I lost some of the footage. And I just want you to be able to follow along and know exactly what I'm doing. So come back, refer to this page. I might put this cut list on my Patreon page. I'm not exactly sure yet. But of course, it's here. You're going to have to pause the screen and yada, yada. But uh, this will give you some idea of what I'm actually building, how I actually went about it. And these are all um, four feet by eight foot. Uh, pieces of uh, you know finished plywood whether it be finished poplar three-quarter inch finished birch three-quarter inch I didn't use finished birch I recommend it for the tabletops because they delaminate a little bit less you can still get delaminating 
got to check them and then the half inch for the back board but uh we'll get into another itemized list for uh, the shaker style doors we used uh one quarter uh inch mdf uh, i think i used about two or three i used three sheets of that um, and those are the the two by fours, uh, two two feet by four feet pieces that they sell at Home Depot. But let's get into the uh, the video. All right, this is the beginning of the project where we're going to turn three quarter inch poplar plywood into a desk. So this is the side cuts that I'm doing right now, the 24 inch by 29 and a half. I'm using the level and clamp method to try to get square cuts. I make a line on either side to match the measurements. Um, this isn't always accurate, but it is a method I am showing you. Um, the line method, you should use a pencil. I do use a Sharpie, and unfortunately the Sharpie created some issues. What I do is I draw these lines here on either side, and then I line up the blade with the far side of the cut. Basically, I'm trying to cut a little bit longer, but getting as close as I can. And so it's not that you're getting longer, you just wanna be on the outside of that cut so you can just see the line and, or, or essentially make sure that you're not cutting it too short. Sometimes you can take a 16th, an eighth of an inch off and it screws up the whole project, you gotta do another piece. So something to consider, you always wanna cut on the uh, outside of that line or basically the outside of the cut so you get the, uh, the desired width that you want. And if you cut a little bit longer, you can always take a little bit more off. Um, sometimes at 16th inch intervals. So I just do my center cut here, and those are done. Uh, this is going to be the tops of the 36 and a half inch cabinets. Um, you're gonna have to adjust your measurements for the dado cut. So quarter inch on each side means you take half off the total measurement of the cabinet that you want. If um, you want to take more, you're going to have to adjust. So, you know, if you want to do a dado that's a half inch depth on a three quarter inch board, you're going to have to take a half inch on each side, which means one inch. Moving on, this is just more of the uh, level and clamp method. The level bubbles or the, the indicators can get in the way. So, the new method that I ended up implementing was this um, actual rail system that was sold by Harbor Freight and drawing a line. So when you draw a line on something, if that track system is either moving or shifting in any way, you can make the adjustments as you're cutting to make sure that it stays exactly where you want it to be. And you can actually use the rail system to assist. And this provided much straighter cuts. Unfortunately, the initial cuts I did with the level system were about an eighth to a quarter inch out of whack and I had to correct that with the face frame when I was trying to go frameless in the front. Of course, I had to add, and once you add a face frame, that's three quarter inches, anything behind the cabinet, whether it be a baseboard, you gotta add those measurements uh, to your tabletop. So again, this is the uh, track method with line, and you know, you're gonna have to move everything out. You still gotta line up the blades to make sure everything's even, and you still want to be outside that cut and then of course you want to use a pencil not a sharpie and make sure that that pencil is nice and sharp that way um, the line that you do make is as accurate as possible and you just get better cuts in my opinion and here i'm just going to be drawing lines with a combination of square you can see i've already drew a line at the bottom that's about 3.5 inches I do another three quarter inch uh, up from that because I was initial, I'm initially using a router bit that is one quarter inch. Um, the reason that I do that is I'm just trying to show you if you only have a quarter inch bit, you're gonna have to make multiple passes. You need to draw multiple lines. Of course, if I had a uh, three quarter inch bit, I could just do, you know, I can draw a line for reference to make sure I'm not falling outside the scope of that line. Um, it's good practice, but you don't have to do it. Uh, so then here with the quarter inch bit, you're going to see multiple passes. You're going to see me going over and over and over again to try to make sure that uh, everything fits. And then of course there's you know, multiple times I'm doing a test fit. It has a lot of time to the project, but this is a way to go about it. If you only have the bit, you don't want to run out and grab more bits. Uh, this is a way to get it done. And that's the point of my videos is everyone out there on YouTube is showing you the best, um, you know, basically 
uh, they're pros, they, they do everything, and it's a one-shot deal. They have all the best and the greatest tools. You know, I have tools that, it, it, it's just the reality of it. You're going to have to invest in some tools, but like some of these biscuit joiners and some of these, some of these setups they have are just ridiculous. And I wanted to show you that you as a person with not a whole lot of tools or a minimal investment of tools can get these jobs done. There's things that you should invest in, okay? Um, bits, routers, um, you know, circular saws. There's, there's just no way around it sometimes. And these tools aren't as expensive as some of these big tabletop saws. Um, you know, the, just some of the tools that you see. Um, this is a way to go about it. Uh, of course, you could also do these dado cuts on a circular saw. Um, that is uh, another way you can get dado blades. But um, the cost of the router versus some dado blade sets that I've seen, <clears throat> the price isn't much different. So getting into that, this is where, you know, uh, this is the top cut here. I need to make three quarter inches for that three quarter inch to fit on the top of the dado cut at a quarter inch depth. And of course, multiple passes. And now I'm using, you can see as a guide, I'm using a piece of wood. Drawbacks to the wood is if it's, you know, out of whack in any way. It's going to mess up how you slide. The great thing about the router is as you're doing it, if you draw your lines, you can twist it in such a way. You can just give it a little twist, and it'll still follow that, that line. And if you go slow enough, you can stay right with that line, whether that's straight or not. And that's a great thing that I like about routers as well. You know, circular saw or a table... <clears throat> sorry, not a circular saw. A tabletop saw, you know, you're going to run over, and if you know, you're out of whack in any way, you know, you're going to have to start over. So uh, just a couple different ways to do it that's different from other channels. And I'm using a um, you know, one by four piece of lumber here and it's uh, you know, clamped down so it doesn't move. And you know, this is just another method. So now let's move on to the next method where I think I actually get a three quarter inch bit. And here is the easiest method of all with this router. Get a three quarter inch bit properly sized, make sure that the, it's lined up and then just use the rail system. I picked this rail system up again from Harbor Freight. This made it so much easier, so much quicker. And uh, I'm really glad it's something that I went with. Uh, again, this is just another method to get this done. And now we're going to preg jig tools. So this, um, <coughs> this is a, I forget, it's the pin jig for uh, cabinet shelves, and this thing is awesome. Um, I was going to do it by hand, and then everyone that I talk, seemed to talk to said, yeah, don't do that. You're going to have a miserable time. Uh, just get the jig. I think it was $25, $30 on Amazon. I got it on sale, and uh, it worked out fantastic. I, I wouldn't do it any other way after this point, and I highly recommend investing in this tool if you're going to do cabinets. Another, another little tip that you want um, to know is you want to keep kind of drilling those and making sure that they're clear and you want to clean up those those drill holes because if you go to finish, you know, whether it's stain, lacquer, uh, anything like that, paint, uh, it's going to get in those holes. It's going to be a problem. It's just not going to look neat and nice. So just pay special attention. Don't over drill to the point where the pins aren't going to fit. And now we're getting into the build here. You can see I have these little orange uh, 90 degree pieces that I clamp uh, with dado cuts. It's pretty easy to get a 90 degree But with these clamps, it makes it really really easy um, Of course any type of cut that's out of square or any problems with that you're gonna have to correct so make sure that you do a test fit um, But these these I highly recommend again something else I picked up on Amazon um, You know you clamp them in you're gonna have to invest in some clamps again People get so mad that they have to buy tools if they're doing a project and sometimes there's just no way around it So emphasis on that here I'm using a finished nailer from uh, Ryobi, and I believe that is the 16 gauge. And then I moved to a brad that's an 18 gauge, and then eventually some pins. But um, not on this section of the project. This is going to be all finished nails. So I'm going to make sure that it's square, it's lined up in the back. Of course, I did a dado cut on the half inch piece for the back. You got to make sure that that lines up correctly, and then when you're ready, you can just you know, nail everything in. Make sure that it's level, but of course, if you're making sure it's level, you're going to need to make sure that the surface that you're making sure it's level on is, of course, level. Um, 
you know, and then what what happens if this is out of square? Everyone always, you know, says, oh, make sure that it's square. What happens if it's not? Well, you're going to have to manipulate it. You're going to have to get a, you know, rubber hammer or, or a strap, and you're going to have to manipulate that box until you can get it square. You want to do that before the glue sets up, and then once you make sure that, you know, you're going to measure across from each corner, and if they're the same measurement, it's square. If it's not, it's out of square. Get it square, and you know, again, you do that with straps or, or manipulating the box before you put in the back piece. And then once it's in, and once it's square, you can make sure that uh, that's all done before the glue has had a chance to set up. Clamp it down, you're good to go. And again, uh, now I'm doing the larger clamps. These are 42 inch clamps, I believe, from Harbor Freight. Um, the great thing about Harbor Freight clamps is they are cheaper than any other clamp I've, I've found, and they're pretty decent. Um, <clears throat> so you're gonna have to clamp this project. You're gonna have to make sure, because the, the finishing nails go in, but they're just kind of there. Um, you know, it does keep the project together, but the wood glue is really what you want to hold everything together. And then, of course, you can do a crisscross where you nail down and across into that wood to make sure that it doesn't kind of separate. Only a few nails up top that you're going to need to, to prevent that. You can even use a brad. Just make sure that the brad's going to, you know, really get into the project. Uh, once this is done and dried up and glued, you're ready to move on to the next cabinet to build. And, of course, um, you know, eventually the file cabinets. Now this is the half inch uh, sanded plywood back plate that I made. There's a dado cut in the back to uh, you know match the dados of the side panels. You're gonna notice it's out of square up top that, and that's the cut, that's not the cabinet. I, I double checked and you can see my frustration here. Oh man, I'm not happy about that. So uh, it is something I had to live with, uh, lumber. You know, I'm trying to keep my costs down in building this project and it's just something I had to fill unfortunately. The box is done so now it's going to be the front face plate. Uh, this is going to help make it more rigid, uh, just something for that to sit on so it doesn't sag. And then I'm going to add a uh, face frame that it's going to have something to attach to. So multiple reasons to do this. It's just uh, going to make a, a stronger cabinet in my opinion. And then of course uh, you know <clears throat> if I have to shim it or you know do anything where there's any weight on it it's not going to contort, it's not going to bend, and that's why I did that. It doesn't always happen, but it can sometimes. So, and then of course I'm using my finished nails. I believe I did inch and a half, inch and a half uh, finished nails. And then here, we had, this is the cabinet that was out of square. So of course, uh, you're actually going to see it fall here. What a pain in the butt. <laughs> it, I'm trying to do my test fits. One of the dados was a little loose and it falls apart. But this project was out of square, some of the cuts were wrong, so there's nothing wrong with that. Again, you know, like everyone shows you the, the perfect cut, the perfect everything, and I wanna show you, you're gonna make mistakes. People get afraid of doing these projects because they're afraid of little things like this. And you know what? Carpentry, putting this stuff together, doing something like this, it's all, there's going to be adjustments, there's going to be fixes, it's not going to go together easy like you'd want it to. It's going to fall apart just like that, <laughs> just then. Um, you're going to be aggravated, you're going to have some problem solving to do, and that's part of the fun of doing the carpentry. It's just, you know, during the project, it, it, there's so much satisfaction that comes with solving some of the problems you come across of. And then of course there's just aggravations that you're always going to have to look at <laughs> if, if you don't want to make a new piece. So, uh, and then sometimes that's the aggravation is you have to go out and buy more lumber and hope that you've learned your lesson enough not to make the same mistake twice. And uh, you know, of course, I, I'm able to get these cabinets together with some ease. I'm able to fix some of the out of square 
problems of the cut with uh, face frame and shims and you'll see that as I put things together down the line. All right, a quick note here, I used these photos of uh, a guy on uh, his YouTube page is How to Build Stairs. And if you've seen any of my videos, I've always wanted to showcase this guy because he is literally the guy, this guy right here, he showed me how to build a staircase. And if you've seen my staircase, it is professional grade. And it's thanks to that guy over at How to Build Stairs. Again, I've always wanted to showcase him in my videos and this is how I figured out how to do it. Uh, amazing, amazing uh, videos. So you should go check them out if you are looking to do a staircase. No, it has nothing to do with this, but again, here's how to do some calculations. Is how I get stuff done. So here I'm just getting into my face frame cuts. I'm doing a 90 degree because uh, I'm gonna essentially wrap the front of the face uh, with a face frame and carry it all the way around. I'm gonna do a shaker style. So I want that square style all throughout the cabinet. Now I'm gonna notice here that it's out of square. This is where I noticed that the cut was off and I'm gonna have to shim it. So I know I'm gonna have to shim that and essentially just cut the shims off, the parts that are overhanging with a razor and then I'm going to have to uh, fill it with something, either a wood filler. With this, I actually used uh, silicone um, uh, caulking, and it was able to fill that with a white color to uh, make sure that it matched more of the face frame. And because I'm not painting or staining inside, um, you know, I'm leaving that natural wood color in there, um, I, I didn't really want to do too much more. But that's how I was able to correct that. Again, showing you the mistakes so you can adjust for yours. Everyone makes mistakes. Now, the bottoms of these were even. I measured it as much as I can. You can see I had to shim. Now I'm putting the face plate on, or the face frame, putting it together uh, bit by bit. Some people make um, ones that aren't bit by bit. I like the bit by bit because I'm able to, uh, you know, if, if there's any imperfections in it, I can adjust just by pulling a piece out, putting another one back in. I'm going to do 45 degree cuts on the end again because I'm wrapping that piece, holding it all together. There are screws inside both the file cabinet and the regular uh, bookshelf cabinet that hold it all together. Uh, this is going to help do that. I don't use any wood glue on these because uh, if I ever have to replace them, they get beat up. Uh, I just want to be able to take that off. And of course, this is a 1x6 that I have to reduce to about 5 inches. Um, actually, I think 4.5 inches. So. Uh, that's something that I had to do for the bottom and then of course because as you saw I had to shim due to an un, uh, not level basement floor um, I there, there is a way where if you put the, the finished cut and it's still hanging over the top you can draw a line basically put a pencil on the floor and draw a line on that board and those are the areas you have to cut out to match the floor uh, and I will show you how I do that with the tabletops down the road I'm gonna, now that I have the face plate in, I can yank those shims on the right. It should stay up most of the way. I still use a level to assist. And then of course, when I do pull this out for finishing, I do put screws in the back. Uh, again, just, I, I didn't want it to sag with the finished nails. And without wood glue, uh, that's probably gonna happen over time. So I yank these shims. I make sure that uh, I can put it together and or, or get my 45 degree cut. And then, I install that and then I'm ready to do the next one.
so I actually found these tools on with ads on Instagram and these tools are great they're like a tracing uh, tool that it has a lock it, it's fairly decent so able to use with the jigsaw is essentially cut these pieces out that match my baseboard and I was able to put this in any type of gap that was left because I'm painting I was able to use uh, some caulking to fill that gap and uh, make sure that they're it, it looked seamless And of course here I am just uh, making sure that I have all my tools first and then what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a Craig jig um, and this is for a rip cut with a circular saw and I'm able to go right down the center. This is going to be a 25 and a half inch cut and unfortunately um, remember I brought up in some of my earlier videos some delaminating. So this is a tabletop I'm using a poplar. There's a lot of delaminating with the poplar. So I'm going to recommend the birch. Unfortunately, birch, is, uh, birch plywood is about $55 a pop, and you're going to be wasting quite a bit here. So you might need to mix and match with some of the wood. Maybe you can utilize this piece somewhere else, but if you're staining, it's not going to match up. If you're painting, you might be able to see some of it, but it's not. it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. But this is the tabletop, 25.5 inches tall. Tabletop is going to be a little bit out of whack because the walls are always out of whack. I'm going to show you how to correct for that using the using a pencil to basically draw along the the wall. You can, so you're going to cut the measurement first, 25 and a half inches, your your final measurement, and get it as accurate as possible. Then you're going to drag that line. Um, if it's not accurate, and you draw that line, and you might still have some overhang, I try to line everything up perfectly here. And then of course I just sand the edges for this part here. Now this is the method I'm talking about. You put the, the pencil along the wall and then you just draw a line and then there's going to be some left. You're going to have to use your circular saw or a jigsaw to cut this out. Um, I know some people who even use table saws and I think they're crazy for doing it because if it kicks, oof, it's never try to save wood that's kicked. Just get out of dodge. But uh, yeah, that's, that's why I avoid that. So. Uh, this is, I believe, the six foot piece, and then of course on the ends, there's the three and a half to four foot pieces. Actually, they're, they're about three, yeah, three feet. So then I'm gonna put the face frames on, and I eventually add another piece under that just to prevent it from sagging. So another three quarter inch piece of plywood goes in the center of this, and uh, that prevents it from sagging if you're gonna do a monitor to monitor, which we are doing in this project.
And this is me just using a circular saw with a laser to uh, essentially, you don't use the laser, but you essentially are just taking that little bit off so you can fit the wall and then after we do this, it, the, the whole project just fit perfectly, it works seamless. You don't want to sand the ends just to make sure that they're, um, you know, everything's going to fit properly and those little uh, bits and pieces don't throw anything off at all. And once I did that, it uh, slid right in and it worked. Now I beat the hell out of this planer, unfortunately it only took two passes to destroy the blade, but I hit some nails and it's not working as well as I want, but I wanted to show you if you needed to take a little bit more off, you didn't want to take another risk on the saw, you could slowly take stuff off with the planer and you just keep measuring and make sure that the, what you're taking off is exactly what you need and that is another method to get the, the exact measurements that you need, especially when you're down to a 30 seconds, a 16th, 30 second, or 64th, you, know, you can really get those measurements uh, with a planer. And then of course I'm putting on the faceplate here. This is actually gonna be, I'm gonna use a round over bit on both sides of this. If you round over bits to make sure you don't get any um, lines and it's, it looks out of whack, you just wanna make sure that it's high enough where it can make that you know, oval or, or curved shape only at the end without any other detail in it. So I'm gonna attach all that with wood glue. And then uh, later on in the project, I'm gonna show you how I it. base frame here. Guys, that was the video. Um, we're all done here. We're going to do a part two to show you the next part, the routing, the painting, the finishing. And, um, you know, that was part one of this wall dust project. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Tell me what you think. Tell me what I can do to improve. And of course, I'm always complaining about my cameras because the ones that I bought, uh, I spent about $250 and they didn't end up working out. They never focused. So I had to send them back. Uh, try to invest in your channel only to be punished. But again, just like, share, and subscribe. I'm Joel with Dissecting DIY. You have a good day.